Welcome everyone to a new episode of Genuine Rockstars and today's Genuine Rockstar is Tess Gallagher. Thank you so much for joining us, Tess. Hi, yeah, it's great to be here. Could you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? Uh, well, I'm a paleontologist and I am currently a master's student at the University of Bristol in UK and I study dinosaur skin. What got you interested in paleontology in the first place? And how did you end up studying dinosaur skin? Way back in the day when I was three years old, uh, I was on my parents' sailboat with like family and friends. And we had the old like DVD player thing set up. And that night we watched Jurassic Park and I believe all three movies. And that was how I got hooked on uh paleontology. Uh, as for uh, dinosaur skin, never in my life did I ever imagine I would be studying dinosaur skin. I mean, it's something I've always been interested in, of course, right? Like there's Dakota, the dinosaur mummy. I thought that was really cool as a kid. But I actually got into studying dinosaur skin uh, because I ended up finding it. So you published on a Diplodocus skin from a Mother's Day Quarry in Montana. And you went there with your mother and uh, seeing how you just uh, were introduced to Jurassic Park by your parents, I see a relation here. So <laughs> could you tell the story of how you went there with your mom? So that year, my mom had actually retired and she was like, I want to see what you do. So <laughs> she decided to come with me. Um, and that year, that was 2019. So I was actually... Uh, second year of undergrad when I went. Uh, and this was actually my second time at Mother's Day. So I went with Elevation Science. They used to be called Bighorn Basin Paleontological Institute. And I actually knew, uh, so Jason Poole was, uh, he's one of the guys who works for Elevation Science. And I knew him beforehand because of the museum I volunteer at the Academy of Natural Sciences. So he kind of told me about this experience and I've been going almost every year now. Of course, 2019, uh, mom and I were just kind of working on a rib uh, going into a hill. And I was, you know, just digging up the hill and I noticed something kind of bumpy. But I was like, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to come back to it later. And I kind of made this crevice in the rock. Uh, where I was actually just like laying in there, just kind of chilling, like, yeah, you know, working on the, going up the rib. And then my mom looks in this crevice that I made and she's like, what, what is that? And then I stop, I like, put my hands down, lift myself up and right underneath my chest, this is plate sized piece of diplodocus skin. Wow. Thanks mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> You expect to find bones. They're the most easily preserved thing. So softer parts or imprints thereof, you often miss actually because you don't expect them. So uh, a little bit about Mother's Day. So the Mother's Day quarry is this quarry that was discovered around the 90s. Uh, it was discovered by volunteers at the Museum of the Rockies. They worked on it for a little bit and then another team came in. These were the people at the museum center in Cincinnati and they collected well over like 2,000 bones and now they stopped because obviously it's all diplodocus so now uh, Elevation Science is now working on it basically you have this herd of juvenile diplodocus and as you know the Morrison formation has its dry and wet seasons so they were probably walking around during the dry season they come to a uh, watering or a river of some kind that they usually return to during the wet season. But unfortunately for those juvenile diplodocus, the rain was late that year. So they all dehydrated and died. And then their bodies, yeah, I know it's so sad. The more you learn about Mother's Day, the worse the name becomes. I mean, I'm a mom, so it sounds horrific. So these diplodocus, they die, but then they desiccate in the sun for several months. And you can actually tell this by the bone. The bone has a specific texture to it that tells you, oh yeah, these were drying out for a very long time. And of course, because the diplodocus were just drying out, the skin also desiccates and it basically turns into like a leather. 
Exactly. You get, you get these mummy type structures. I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever found like a forgotten cat in the top of a barn or something, but yeah, right. No, it's, it's the same exact principle. These animals. I mean, if you think about, I don't know if you've ever go out to a desert and then you find maybe what, like a dead cow or something, there's nothing left of the organs, but all you have is the bone. And sometimes you even have the hide That's kind of the similar concept of what's going on with these diplodocus. So when the rains finally came back, it brought with it something called a debris flow, which is very dangerous. Uh, it, it's kind of like a flash flood, but instead of it just being water, it's this very, uh, it's, it's very thick and full of debris and mud. So it's basically like a, a texture like concrete. So that just comes flowing in and it basically drags all these dead diplodocus and, you know, that pulls the bones apart and whatnot. And it drags them for, I believe, we believe they were dragged for like a mile. And then they were set and the anoxic conditions also kind of help the, the skin not decay. And then, yeah, so there you have Mother's Day. Yeah, these, uh, these debris flows, it's, it's actually quite common. It's actually something you see nowadays very much with the whole climate change stuff that uh, even in... in uh, Europe that the drought of the summer lasts so long that it, every layer, uh, like all the top layers of the soil are depleted of moisture so that when it finally starts to rain again, it just collects all of this material and flows downhill. Uh, and then you get these flash floods and they are horrendous, but yeah, perfect fossilization material though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be on the optimistic end here, <laughs> could you tell us what you learned about this diplodocus skin? What's really interesting about the skin is that usually when you think of uh, long neck dinosaurs, you think they have elephantine skin, or you might imagine them with the same scales all across the body, or as the, the iconic Diplodocus looks, it's kind of got a bunch of spikes all going down its head. So the reality is that basically none of these interpretations are correct, or at least for the mother state Diplodocus. These animals had incredibly diverse scales. And not only that, I mean, I would even be willing to argue that they were more diverse, than, potentially more diverse than any living animals. So not only are these scales complex, but you even have a couple of patterning and even scale shapes that don't exist today in any animals. So for instance, there's these scales that I call, that I call the globular scales. And these globular scales, they look exactly how they sound. They just look like a bunch of globs or jelly beans just kind of like fitted together. And it's like, when I first saw that, I didn't even know what to make of it. I'm like, oh, surely this is like a taphonomic thing. Like, I don't know. Maybe the skin is like decayed really bad. But no, there's nothing like it. Uh, of course, you know, I looked into explanations in taphonomy and I couldn't really find any. It's just how the scales looked. Dinosaur skin is a very hot topic, and for some reason it doesn't really seem to translate well to the movies or popular media in general. Um, could you perhaps shed light on the scales versus feathers debate? I mean, don't get me wrong, I think there's like three options, like including ostriches have scales on their feet and feathers on their, on their bodies. Um, so you've got scales, you've got feathers, you've got scales and feathers. What did Diplodocus have? And can you tell us a little bit about this? Diplodocus, I can say with quite a lot of confidence that it probably did not have feathers. Uh, maybe it had some like you know, dinky display feather on its head or something, right? Like that's possible. But uh, something that people need to keep in mind with really big animals is a little something called the square cube law which is the law that, unfortunately, something like Godzilla is not allowed to exist because of this law. Um, <clears throat> so square cube law, basically, as your volume gets bigger, proportionally, other factors such as your surface area are going to get smaller. So because of that, if, since you have less surface area, you have less uh, surface area to dissipate heat out of your body, right? So this is why African elephants don't have hair, right? Because if they did, they would overheat because of their size. Um, so when it comes to Diplodocus, right? So elephants for comparison are what, three to six tons. Diplodocus is 14 to 20 tons. 
much bigger animal, right? So I, I highly doubt that Diplodocus would have any kind of feathering, even if it's like, I know elephants kind of have this sparse hair sometimes. I even doubt they'd have something like that. I think you can compare the elephant's hair similar to ours compared to apes. We have some body hair, but we don't have full-on fur. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's a great comparison. How do you like to spend the hours during which you're not studying dinosaur skin or sleeping? Walking around Bristol is very nice. It's such a great city, and I get so much exercise out of it. Back at home, so I'm from Philadelphia, and there's the Wissahickon, which is just beautiful. No fossils, but you get a lot of metamorphic rock, which is really cool to see. Well, I, I also, I'm a huge... Uh, Video game nerd, Monster Hunter, favorite video game of all time. Um, when I'm at home, I love spending time with my dog, Remington, who I miss dearly. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, watching YouTube, hanging out with friends. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Tess. You're a genuine rock star. Thank you for having me. <laughs>